I think it's good also, just change it. Alright, so basically you're playing as a Vladimir, right? Um, I'm playing as a Yeah, you're playing a relay against Vladimir. Yeah, yeah. What's your idea in this laning phase? Like, what, what do you want to do against this Vladimir? Um, I think... Uh, wait until like level 4 or 5 and go for a kill maybe. Alright, how are you gonna... What are you gonna do with the first wave here? In the first minion wave? What's your plan? Uh, now I just sit back and uh, farm with Q. Right. So I don't get to talk too much. Um, one one thing you can do against Vladimir, which is or against uh, most ranged champions, if you're playing Aurelia, is you're obviously just gonna Q, right? Um, you wait for all the minions to be one shot with the Q, then you Q all the minions. After that, you go on them because you're generally stronger than most um, ranged champions. But you don't want to fight in the minions, right? So then you can kill all the three melee minions, then you can go on them, and you get the advantage in the fight because. He's not gonna have a lot of minions to hit you back, right? Okay. So basically, right here, you can just Q, 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 attack him. You should Q the close one first, and just instant Q all of them, Q him, and fight him. Or you can, if he's close by, you can also just auto attack him and then chase after him the Qs, right? I think you should have traded him here because it gives you the advantage. And you can start already winning the lane at that point, basically. It's the same here, like, you don't mind trading with him. When there's very few minions, if it's against the ranged champions, that's where you're strong. The only problem where you lose traits is if there's a lot of minions. So the second, mm -hmm. so just with the, at level one, I I upgrade him here. Or? Yeah, you you can start training him at level one. Like you know, you don't need to chase him down super hard. You just get like two or three hits on him and the Q, and that's it. But you only want to do it after you kill the melee minions, right? So they don't start attacking you. Like basically with really it's really important to play with all the minions and stuff. Alright, so now he loads up faster than you. He's ha he's having all the pressure basically because you didn't hit too much early game. Um, it's not necessarily bad, but at this point you have to be a bit careful. I think every time you go for a minion and he can hit you, you can hit him back. Like basically, if you go in for a minion close to him, like you did earlier, you can just Q on him, E him and walk backwards. You don't have to be too afraid of doing small trades. Okay. Like for example, you go for this minion, you can just kill the minion, E him, you stun him, you hit him once, you walk backwards, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. Alright, so he's pushing you, all you have to do is just farm, be careful of the enemy jungler, and never really go for long trades. Um, nothing's really happening, it's fine. Still fine. Well, let's see this again. I think th then he got his rage bar up. You should give up any minion basically. You don't want to uh, take a minion whenever he got his rage up. So if he gets a hundred of the um, 30 rage, whatever you want to call it, you should just give up one small minion because it doesn't act in a matter much. And the only times he really trades hard on you is when he got that. So this minion should just let go. It's just one minion after all. Mm. Yeah, okay. Like basically you just need to think about when when is your opponent strong. And right now this Vladimir is only strong when he got his rage up. So you only avoid him at those times. And then here you can cue the big one first and just run out instantly. You're kinda dragging out the time, you can just instant cue both of them. It's not a big deal, but it could have saved you from taking his E damage. But so far it's fine. Yeah, okay. Um, now level 4 you can start trading him, you can start finding him. The only thing you need to remember is where the enemy jungler is. Um, you can beat him at this point as long as he doesn't have his rage. The problem is just you don't have any vision, so you should just keep playing passive till you know where the enemy jungler is, and then you play aggressive afterwards. So basically just try and stay healthy at all times. Mm. Don't fight yeah. till you see the jungler and then fight him. Also, on a really against Vladimir, I think you should get Executioner's Calling the second you can. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. Good. This is a good trade, you are fighting really easily. Um, you should just keep doing that. Like, basically, don't ever let him heal on you. Like, you don't even need to take minions so much if you're against Vladimir. And you don't need to ever fight him, then he got his rate up. And then you'll win every trade, if he does those. For example, right here, you... You focus too hard on the minions, then he got his rage bar up, he heals a lot on you, and he does a lot of damage to you. 
you need to mm -hmm. avoid this specific trade right here at all yeah. times like even like give up one or two minions it's fine mm. because he can't farm either that well because he doesn't have his Q right he's gonna have a hard time because he's focusing on fit hitting you at that point okay. how much gold do you have um i think you should try and base as soon as possible here he's basing as well so that's fine -ish. um like basically you played this laning phase a bit too passive right now but you have really good farm i think right here he bases you need to base as well the problem is that you're staying to try and get minion control but if he tps back to the lane right now you can't actually do anything to him he's gonna dominate you in the lane and you're just gonna delay your base while you could have been stronger than him from the get-go right so basing mm -hmm. right here then he bases because you're ahead especially you're gonna have the item advantage you can get a pink ward you can do whatever you want to him at this point basically Mm. But you're letting him have a chance in the laning phase by not basing. And you end up basing anyway, so it just took a bit of time. Which makes you lose some extra minions. Um, you go for Fage. I think against the Vladimir, you should always go for either Sheen or you should go for um, Excusance Calling. Personally, I go for Excusance Calling because he can't do anything if you have that item. You completely stump him. Mm. Uh, some people go Sheen because they can burst him down and kill him. Both are fine. You just have to figure out which one you want to go for, but Fate is not that good. Because basically he pulls all the time and he's going to avoid the speed bo boost from Fate anyways. It doesn't help you chunk him. And then also then you play a matchup like this where you want to be aggressive. You need to have a pink ward. So you should always be buying a pink ward no matter what. Then you're laying like this. Um, this game yeah. you had enough money for Sheen and a pink ward. You could also have bought um, the excuse is calling another item in a pink ward. That's completely up to you. But Fate is not that good. Okay, so I uh, I usually go for Phage, that's why. Um, mm -hmm. As a first item, generally, on on Arabia and Jax. Yeah, like, Phage is a pretty good item if you want to survive people, or if you want to chase them down. But Vladimir can't really chase down, right? Because he pulls, he slows mm -hmm. you, and he's going to run away regardless. Um, so he's not one of the champs where you want to do that. You want to burst him down with a Sheen Burst, or you want to um, just stop his healing so you can't sustain against you. Okay. How are you planning to play the laning phase out now? Like, how do you want to control the minions and everything at this point? And now my wave is pushing, so uh, I guess just push it into the tower. Mm -hmm. I think you have two options here, basically. First, you slow push two waves, and then you smash it in, and you try to damage him as much as possible doing the slow push. Or you hard push this wave coming in now, and then you get walls into the enemy jungle, because you don't know where the enemy jungle is, right? Okay. So either you need to hard push really hard on the first wave, or you need to slow push as slow as possible until the next wave comes as well. And then you need to keep tra trading them all the time. Uh, it seems like you're going for a slow push, you're not really pushing, which is fine. I think you should be looking to trade with him more. You're kind of playing passive. He doesn't have his rage bar up, and you're being afraid of him. Um, before this entire thing, before he even came back to lane, you should have put a ward down, so you know where Greg is, and you can play aggressive. Mm -hmm. But you need to be playing aggressive him. You have more items than him. If you look at just the item straight up, he got an 800 gold item. You have a 1250. You have the stronger champion. You have more CS nerfing. So you need to abuse your lead. You're much stronger than him. Mm, okay. You go down ward now. This is good. You should be going on him here. Um, you just level up. You know that you're going to level up as well. So you should try and time your leveling up. Uh, I'm just going to go back to it. Like basically at this point, you know you're going to level up the second get the cannon minion. You should try and time that so you instantly go on him every single time, right? Because he doesn't know exactly when you level up. You know it. And at this uh, point, yeah. you could almost have bursted him down to almost no health. Because you can um, ultimate the minions here after you kill the cannon minion. And then you can just keep training him down. He's going to have to flash most likely. Alright, you go on him. This is good. This is good. I think then you're playing against the Vladimir, you shouldn't be afraid of queuing early because you're not really trying to kill him. If he's good, then you go on him, he's going to W. So you want to queue as early as possible, if that makes okay. sense. Like, auto attack yeah, him yeah, once yeah. and then queue. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Basically, this guy is playing it badly, um, which is lucky for you, right? Then another thing. I, it, it's a small detail. I'm going to show it here again, which I just noticed. You're trading him here, right? Th this is fine. This is completely f well. Um, at this point... He almost got his rage bar up. 
you should not be lasting this man. You should just give it up because if he plays well, he's going to walk after you at this point because you can't catch him anymore. And then he's going to Q you. Then you hit this minion. But you can avoid mm -hmm. him getting the Q off by just walking backwards and letting that minion go. And then you can have more pressure on him. No, oh, okay. Like basically here, he should have Q'd you. He doesn't do it. That's a mistake from him. But he could have. Mm. Yeah, I see. Yeah. At this point, basically, all you have to do is call Assistant Ping from the Nocturne. You see he's around. You want to dive him. Mm -hmm. And you guys can easily dive him. You can probably even do it alone. Like if I were you, I would just flash onto him. You know he used his abilities. I'll, I'll just flash to him under the tower if you need to. Like I would basically need to dive this guy. With the jungler. You need to time to come up top. I noticed you weren't pinging at all. Because he's really low. You guys can easily dive him. This, they can't respond basically. If you guys go for a dive. Yeah, I don't know. I have uh, bad experiences with the blood and, uh, and diving because of his W. It's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, especially with Nocturne, the fear is going to go through regardless of the W. Killing Vladimir here is very easy for you guys. Um, you should try and dive. If you have bad experiences, I understand why you wouldn't. But this, this yeah, is the it's point where you should. It's not like I'm uh, afraid of diving. It's that uh, Vladimir is, uh, can go around really easily with his W. But yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Alright, so now you go to gank mid. Um... I think this gank is not that good. Mainly because, like, it's okay because they're against the Sundra and everything. But the problem is that you're against the Vladimir. You really fight ahead of him. He's low health. You don't want him to heal back up in the laning phase. You want to keep shutting him down. So because of this matchup, you don't necessarily want to roam. If it had been a different matchup, it's fine to do. But against Vladimir, since you're ahead, you want to just keep shutting him down. Instead, you should be going into the enemy jungle. Taking this thing. Taking the uh, plant. Keeping these down is really important because then Gregus is having a harder time to gank you. Mm -hmm. So go into the enemy jungle instead of ganking mid necessarily. Alright, th this entire fight is kind of uh, clown fiesta. It's not good to do. Um, the main thing you have to think about here is your mid laner just died. You're two versus three. You don't ever want to put yourself in a situation where you're fighting at a disadvantage, right? Mm -hmm. And you know you'd mid laner's dead, so you, you're just gonna give up this up. The second he dies, just go back top. You can take these things, it's good to take. And then just go back top and lane. Um, I don't know if you win this fight or lose it, but it's a fight you generally don't want to have in the first place. Yeah, okay. Like, th that's the one of the number one things most people do wrong, is the basic math, right? How many are they that won more than us? We never fight. In most cases, right? Depends how fed you are, how weak they are, and so on. I your base, you buy items, what do you buy? I don't know if you buy boots, but you don't buy pink ward. I think you should always be trying to get a pink ward. Boots are not really necessary, but they're fine to have. Um, I'd probably just buy a long shot instead for more damage. I think it's better. But you should always be buying a pink ward at this place in time. Okay. Because you can't really play aggressive against Vladimir, which you want to do without the vision you need. I do freezing. Well, what's your goal here in the laning phase again? Um, yeah, well, now it's uh, kind of difficult to freeze because it's like an even minion wave mm -hmm. on the, on my side. So um, it's gonna push anyway. So I think uh, yeah, I'm gonna slowly push, wait for him, maybe look for a kill, mm -hmm. something like that. I think slow pushing here is really good. It's the correct mindset. You should slow push it. You should look for the kills. Um, one thing you need to do is you need to try and get out wards here and here if you can. Like ping ward over here, normal ward here if you had it. Because in if you have those wards, you're very safe to go on him. Should I, um, if I had the ward, should I put them uh, at this point or like push this wave that's uh, already like low and stuff? So and put the wards. basically what you have to think about then your warning is, is he stronger than you? Is he going to push you in? If he pushes you in, you generally don't want to ward yet. The pink wards. You can put normal wards, that's mm -hmm. fine. But pink wards, you don't want to do if he's pushing you in and he's stronger than you. Because you're strong in him right now, and you're the one slow pushing to him, you just go down and put the pink ward. He's not going to clean it. And you put the normal ward here as well. And and then you're safe, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, so you're pushing. It's fine. Slow push is good. Last thing is really good. At this point, you should try and... Once the minion arrives, you should go hit one minion so you can jump on it always, the ranged minions. You want to have it low. Mm. Um, the yeah, problem you're running into now is you didn't put any wards. 
So going in this guy's very dangerous for you, and you actually don't want to go on him because you don't have the watch, then you should be going on him, right? Like you basically can't make any plays because you don't have the watch you need to. You're still going him. It's the right thing is to go on him, but you just don't have the watch you need to do it. So you have a problem if Greg is ganks you. You would die right here if he ganks you. I'm not sure if he's gonna come or not. You get a really good chunk. You just lack the vision. You have no idea Greg's is coming. It's kind of lucky he doesn't flash on you and they just don't all in you. I think they'd win. But you do luckily have Nocturne as well to back you up. Alright, let's see what happens. Nocturne's round. At this point, I'll, I'll just all in Vladimir. You know Nocturne's all around. You know Nocturne have ultimate. You will win this fight. Um, There's no reason not to fight them. You can jump on Dominion here. You can go on Vladimir. He's going to pull. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think I missed a Q on the minion before. So. Ah, uh, okay. let me check. Might be. I right, so have Q up here. Oh yeah, so you miss on the minions. It happens to all of us. It's It sucks it happened at this point, right? Because this is kind of the point where you want to go on them. But there's no need to talk about that because it happens to everyone. It's like a small detail. You killed both of them almost. Um, wait, let me check. See that again. You fight them. You go all in. This is fine. You have ultimate. I think you're doing one thing wrong here. It's not a big thing, but um, Vladimir is right next to you. He's really low. What what you can do instead? You're going for the Gragas, right? Who's far away from you? You know you can kill him. But all you actually have to do is all attack the Vladimir once and then QQ. Like, you all yeah. like basically you're following after this guy, but you just auto attack this guy once, you get closer to Gragas by queuing him. So you just auto attack, QQ, and they're both dead. Then you hit the tower once, which is a mistake. You don't auto attack, you don't kill him, you're like... You kinda... Mm. You're not focused enough on all him, you kinda wanna get out of the tower as well, and then you end up dying instead, where this should have been a kill. Um, It's mechanical play, so I'm not gonna comment too much on that, cause... It's not really something you can just improve, right? That's something that takes yeah. time. Mm. So it's not too important to focus on. You come back, you're pushing. Um, against Vladimir, I really think you should consider getting Executioner's Calling. It's completely broken against him. You don't buy it at all, which is bad, I think. And you don't really focus on pink wards as well. Which is something I noticed with everybody I've coached, right? Everybody mm. I've coached so far don't know how to play around with Vision. Which is a really big thing holding them back. Because playing with Vision just makes everything much easier if that makes sense yeah, yeah like basically you guys are playing the game on hard mode while i'm trying to make the game easy for myself and then i'm playing you know mm. all right so here you're finding you dying this entire thing is kind of bad um the problem with the entire thing that happened is you start finding gregus near his tower i think personally that i play top lane if i can chunk a jungler i don't care because that doesn't influence me I only want to hit people that influences me to some extent. So getting this guy low is not going to help me at all. Okay. Um, in those yeah. cases, like you just say like, jungler, I don't care about how healthy you are. I'm never going to fight you because any damage you do to me is bad unless you can chuck him like a lot in comparison to what he does to you, right? Mm. And, and then you're kind of trying to base. In Lucky, they know exactly where you are. Oh, they're, they get a good guess on where you are, right? Um, yeah. I don't think you even need to base here. You're healthy enough to stay. You don't have much money. You could just have stayed with your potions. You end up dying. It's not much to do. It's kind of unlucky that you die. But I wouldn't have based in the first place or fallen in the first place. Because you didn't need to. Right, you're basing. Let's see. Bang in the lane. Um. See. I'm just gonna wait till I clean out this wave. Alright, so at this point, what's your plan in the game right now? Uh, now, probably try shutting, shutting him down. I think I can still upgrade him, even though he's 2 0. Mm -hmm. I don't think he based from the previous kill, so. Uh, uh, yeah. So basically, I mean, I said, you, you want to still on. try and fight him and everything? Mm. Okay. Yeah. I think you have flashback up. Um, you're gonna be same level as him in a second, so you can still fight him. It's not really a problem. Um, right now, 
if I were you, what I would do is pushing in Vladimir is really bad because he can always heal. Um, however, your wave is going to slow push here. So what I would do is try and push in as fast as possible. Clean his wards. Get some wards of your own. And then once you have the vision, you should start trying to kill him and put pressure. But right now, I'll just aim to push it in to his tower. Get your vision up and then play aggressive. Because playing aggressive without vision is not very good. It puts you in a risky situation where you don't know what's going to happen. And if you're going to win or lose trades, it's out of your control, basically. Mm, okay. Um, you, you can go on him here. He doesn't have his Q, like the strong Q. You can just go on him, start trading him. There's no reason to play passive. You also end up going on him. I think it's done sooner. Uh, no big deal. If I were you, I would all in him here. It's fine, it's fine. You're trading him really good. He still got pull. You should just keep trading him at all times right now. Like instantly, you can cure this minion and go on him as well now. I know he got his Q up, but you're much stronger than him at this point. E even right now, he wasted it. You should definitely go on him. Mm. Yeah, going him is good. You're killing him. I think one thing I noticed is... You don't look at the ability he uses and ready to instantly go, right? You're kind of waiting a second or so. Like, the second he queued here, you should always be queuing. Mm. If that makes sense, yeah. right? Like, there yeah, should be yeah. almost no delay. You should think about it before he does it, and you should be like... If he queues a minion, I'm going. Does, yeah. But you're kind of thinking about it after he does it. You react and you see him queuing, you're like, oh, mm -hmm. I should go on him now. If that makes sense. Yeah. Basically, most of your movements should be planned before he does something. Because that way you don't have to think about it afterwards and you just know what to do. Alright, you're pushing out. This is good. Um, you're hard shoving. Putting a ward is fine. I wouldn't even put this ward down because Gregus can't do anything to you. This was not giving you anything at this point he's TPing to save his ward that's fine I think it's dumb of him but it's nothing you can do about right um, putting the ward was not necessary but it's not necessarily terrible either alright you're finding him you're just gonna all in him here I assume you're much stronger than him he can't do anything you almost killed him flash this is good uh, basically just well played um personally i would not all in him there because you don't have your ultimate yet it's better if you wait for your ultimate not because this didn't work right yeah. but because it's safer and it's gonna work the ultimate um mm. if you can if you knew you could kill him without then obviously it's a great play i would just take the safe route right i had my driver so i thought uh, i had a good power spark and yeah yeah, yeah. Like, like it's basically just like you could have waited 10 seconds had ultimate and made it even easier but you got the same job done you guys are going to do herald then you're going down for the herald i would clean the pink ward first like right now you're kind of telling them what you're doing um just kill a pink ward it doesn't take that much time and then go for the herald going for herald though is a really good call basically the perfect call nothing better than that i would even consider going in taking this thing and warding as well before because you don't need to rush it that much nothing is going to be happening in the next 15 20 seconds because he's still walking up to your laning phase so there's no reason to rush the child and you could have gotten some vision and cleared some walls and things before actually killing him just the nocturne solo in the first place and also you're taking the herald regardless which means you wasted the ward you had right by not putting it down mm, beforehand yeah, yeah. yeah that's true all right your base now i still think you buy excuse calling is really broken um you you always need to buy pink wards, but basically that should be every base. You just have a pink ward if you don't have it on the map. Okay. Alright, you go for Hexwinger. Um, Hexwinger is fine. You're against a Gregus and Vladimir, double AP. It's generally a very good item. Excuse us calling is... I, huh? I, don't, I think I don't even go for Hexwinger here. It's for uh, the mobs. Ah, uh, Microfets. Hmm. Yeah, I go uh, Titanic Hydra second. Yeah, yeah alright. I think Hexwinger is fine because you're against free APs. If you can one shot Twits in the team fights, Hexwinger is going to be very good against offer you. Like basically, if you kill Twits fast, which you want to do regardless, they're not going to have any damage. So having a Hexwinger into more is going to be very good. Um, I would always go for Excuses Calling first and then into the more probably here. Titanic is okay. f also fine, it's not a bad item. But just because they have so much AP damage and only one AD source, and if you kill him, they basically have no damage on you, right? 
So because mm. of that, I'll go for the other route. All right, so buy a pink ward, which is good. Um, here you're kind of walking back to lane. Um, of, often walking back to lane is fine, but I think you should TP because you don't want to give them the tower. There's no reason to give them the tower here up here, right? Okay. So you're giving it for free while you have pressure in the lane, um, which makes Vladimir able to roam for free afterwards. And basically right now you're much stronger than him. So you want to keep him in the lane, if that makes sense, and make yourself roam. And the second he, your tower goes down, he can just push out and roam, which is not good for your team. It makes him put pressure on your team while you're much stronger than him. Right, so you push, this is fine. Yeah, pink ward. You're putting the herald down, taking the tower. I don't think it's worth for you to herald here. Um, basically, you're stronger than him, you'll get the tower regardless. If he goes anywhere else, you'll also get it. You should use the herald for a second tower because they're much harder to get. The first tower is not necessary to do at this point. I would only do it if it's a first tower or if you know you can get two towers out of the herald, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah okay. Like if they've been first tower of the game, then completely fine, but it's not. Um, instead, I would have gone to clean the pink ward after he comes back to lane and just let the tower be up. That's let the you're pushing, you're finding him. Like if you look at the herald, it doesn't really get to do much in the second tower now. And you can't pressure him anyway, so you only get a first tower out of it. Which isn't worth that much. You're finding him. I think... At this point, you need to know what you want to do in the game. Like, what, what's your goal in the game right now? Uh... Yeah, I'm not really sure. I think just to uh, put more pressure on the top lane and uh, go for the tower. All right. So ba basically what I, I would say you should do is you can't kill Vladimir under the tower. It, it's going to be impossible for you. And you can't really chunk him under the tower either. So anytime he's near his tower, he's safe. Um, You should try and time the minion waves so they go in under the tower. So basically, because you have Herald, you can't really do that. But you should always time the minion waves. So not cleaning this one instantly. You basically just wait for this minion wave, wait for the next one to come, and then you shove it in. So it hits his tower instantly, instead of being frozen in front of it. And then afterwards, because you cannot kill your opponent anymore, you can't do anything to him if he's close to his tower, you don't want to split push anymore. What you want to do is you want to shove him into his tower, and you want to look elsewhere, right? So imagine here, like, now you shove this wave. Um, it's bad control, because you want it to, it to hit his tower, which it doesn't. But at this point, you want to look elsewhere. So you want to start roaming towards mid, cleaning wards, putting wards down, even looking bottom, right? Um, at this time, this is perfect timing for you as well, because bottom, there's actually a fight happening, right? Imagine if you're ready to TP right now. You're looking at the bot lane, you're ready to TP, the enemies goes in on you guys. You have three people here, you're going to TP. He doesn't have TP yet, it's going to be up soon. And then Kier could be moving as well. So you can TP bottom, try and make a play, or you can run mid and try and get a tower. You have those two options. Okay. Instead, you waste your pressure staying top, like you're not really doing anything up here. Um, if you had saved the Herald, you could just walk mid and take mid tower of the Herald. Maybe gotten two towers there. Or you could have fought bottom. Alright, so. You keep farming. You guys are going top instead, you guys are killing the guy even, which is really nice. Oh, you died to him, <laughs> which is not so nice. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, in the first place, you guys should not necessarily be in this position. You try to get a kill, not necessarily bad, he barely survives. Um, but being in this position in the first place isn't that good for you, because you want to pressure elsewhere away from Vladimir at most times. Alright, do you guys both die? Yeah. But yeah, items is fine. We'll just uh, grab us coming in, but... Uh, yeah, like you guys didn't expect him, I assume. Hmm. Alright, you're pushing out top, this is fine. Um, you want to push one more wave. One thing you do wrong here is you shove it too fast again. You want to try and time your pushes so the next wave is closer to you, but always hitting into his tower if that makes sense, right? So if you slow this push a little bit down, then you'd be arriving at the next wave. Wait, I'll show you. You'll arrive up here, okay. like around here, which means you're safe from this place, right? They can't come this path and gank you because you're up here. You'll be able to see them and run away. Um, mm. Right now, instead, you're down here. Imagine the Gragas comes up, Vladimir comes up. 
you won't be able to see them in time. Even if you have what here, whatever, you won't be able to see them. And it just puts you in a more dangerous position. So basically, you want to do the same things you're doing, but just a bit slower. You push it in, um, same thing as before, you pushed him in, you can't kill him, you want to roam and go elsewhere. You want to take the other path so you don't take damage from him, so you don't, like, you're right next to him, if somebody else is here, you're dead. So just push it in and go the other path around, basically. Alright, let's look what you do. You go roam anyways, this is fine. Um, you never clean his pink board, which should have been cleaned 10 minutes ago. He knows it now, so that's fine, you clean it. Nothing necessarily bad. You go back cleaning top, it's okay. Well, what do you want to do at this point in the game? Like, what, what do you think is your job? Um... I, I guess the split pushing, maybe looking for a teleport somewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably, yeah. That's generally how I, yeah. how I go about in the in the mid game. To so push this out, th this tower is basically unkillable, so you never need to think about it at all. If you one v one against a guy, you can't kill on the tower. You're much stronger than Vladimir still. Mm -hmm. You can have a lot of influence. Um, you're waiting around, you're tipping butt, that's fine. Like Basically, I think you should be... I if you look at this point, you clean this way. At this point, you should never go this way. You should always go backwards, right? Because you have nothing more to do top. So you go backwards, yeah. you can go in okay. here, you can go towards mid, whatever. And then, while running backwards, you can be looking bottom. You are looking bottom, it's good. Um, the only problem is you're not really running backwards, right? So, because you're against the blame, it's okay, he can't stop you. He can still damage you though. But if you had been against somebody that can stop you, this could fuck you up really hard. So you're TPing bottom. This is a really risky TP. Yeah, I noticed why I can't see. Yeah. Like basically, you try to TP to hold him out. You cancel it. Nocturne gets baited. That sucks for him. Um, I don't really think it's a bad play necessarily. You try to TP, it's the right mindset. You notice it's bad, you stop it, everything is fine there. Um, it's the only thing you do bad is you stay top too much. You should be running mid here all the time. Like every time you push it in, you run mid to pressure on the map. Instead, okay. you're basically just doing this weird thing where both of you are just farming and you're not really creating any pressure with your advantage, if you notice that. Like he's mm -hmm. basically just sitting safe under his tower farming, you're sitting close to his tower being in a dangerous position farming. So while being ahead of him, you're making it easy for him, but hard for yourself. Okay. And this just sustained for a while, right? And now, now the enemies actually come up here, you don't have any vision. So if they came from a different path, maybe they could kill you. They didn't, but at the same time, you're not able to do anything, right? Doing this whole time. You haven't been able to do anything for the last long time while being ahead of him. Right, let's look. Fire the dragon, you don't have anything. Um, I think at this point, if you look, basically, he's pushing back to you. Um, the minions will always push to you at this point, right? So what you should be thinking about is going elsewhere on the map again. You don't need to go top lane because he's pushing to you. If he's not top lane, you're gaining minions automatically because his minions will be killing yours and more of his minions will arrive, right? So what you want to do is you want to go towards mid or towards bottom or do jungle camps or something, right? Put pressure on the map, basically. Okay. Um, especially now that you're doing Dragon, there's an update on the map. He did, he got TP and you don't. So, if you're around mid now, right, you'll be able to help your team out in the team fight by having pressure on the map. But by going top, you basically end up doing nothing. If that makes sense. Mm. Because you're yeah, not gaining anything up there. As you can see, he just TP's. His TP is bad too. It doesn't really get him anything. Um, you guys actually end up in a fine position here. And I think you should have been mid instead, pushing the mid wave, because you can help bottom faster. You can create faster pressure mid as well, than top. Yeah. But I don't think you should necessarily go bottom, because you're not going to win that fight, and your team should be able to hold it somewhat. All right. So your team holds it. Sona gets caught kind of. She's she played that bad. Whatever. 
It's not really your fault. You keep pushing, I think that's fine. Your team dies, it's still not your fault. You're pushing, it's good. Um, should just be in mid wave instead of top. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna keep pushing. I think, well, after you get the first tower, you should instantly base. Um, you, you know that you cannot get the next tower, right? So after getting this tower, you clean the minions and then you base instantly. Because then you can okay. go bottom and help out your team or go mid or somewhere else, right? Um, if you don't want to base, I'd recommend you going for the enemy jungle instead or going mid. Like if you want to stay on the map, that's okay. But staying top is not going to benefit you. Because you won't be able to get the tower anyway. So just wasting time walking this entire path around. Not really knowing what you want to do. And, and then you end up getting caught by them. This obviously sucks. You get out, it's fine. Your farming is fine. Mm. Alright, so you don't have flash now because wasted. You can't really do anything. Um, where do you want to go and how do you want to play this at this point in the game? Uh, now, I guess probably like the group a bit and uh, look for some uh, objectives, maybe Baron. I think... But, uh, well, we're, we're behind, so probably just uh, hang around my team and uh, try and defend the towers. I think what you should do if you're a top laner that's stronger than an opponent. Um, mm -hmm. Like right now, you're stronger than him. You have teleport up. You should be looking at the objectives so that's up. So Dragon is down. Baron is up. You want to go bottom, push him in, force the opponent under his tower. You don't want to dive him, you don't want to try and take his tower or anything, but you just push him to his tower, and then you move to a team, because that way you're always creating a situation where you're five versus four, or where you're going to be five people before them, right? Um, especially if you're behind, you don't really want to face them five versus five, because you're weaker than them. You want to try and create a, the your pressure a superior advantage for your team, where you're five versus four. So you should just be going basing, going straight bottom, pushing it into his tower, and then roaming. The biggest mistake people do that then they go bottom is they actually try to fight the opponent, get the tower, and things like that. But every time you fight the opponent, it's going to be very risky for you because the enemy team is stronger, and they're going to most likely try and gank you. Okay. So you don't need to ever fight him unless he's being an idiot, right? If he's being an idiot, you can kill him, but... If you don't know Even if he's being like, leader, uh, huh? Uh, let's say like uh, both our teams, four people are uh, doing like a Baron dance, and me and my uh, opponent are bot lane. Mm -hmm. Then it's uh, is it still a bad call to fight him then? Or? So if you see everybody in the team, it's completely fine. But I mean, every situation where you don't know exactly where everybody is, you should never fight him if you don't know for sure you can kill him really quickly, because they're stronger mm -hmm. than you, and they're gonna have all the pressure, right? That's the main thing. Like people always think they have to try and kill the opponent where they really just need to push the waves. Like that's the main job. Killing is just a bonus. Okay. Right, so here you, your teammate gets caught and then you kind of go in weirdly. Um, it's basically just playing the numbers, right? You never want to fight unless you have more numbers. So there's no reason to ever go in unless you know you have more numbers or equal numbers at least. So basically here is just instantly run away. Um, you could run under the tower, you can run this way, it doesn't matter too much. I think under the tower is better. But you're trying to catch the opponent where you don't have anybody around. Mm. Like basically you never need to look for a fight unless you know it's a good fight. Um, if you don't know, you should always just play passive and back off and wait till you actually know it's gonna be good, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's dead. Just waiting. You're back alive. They took... Did they even take the inhibitor? No, they didn't. Why can't I see the health of it? Oh, uh, whatever. Alright, so they still don't have the inhibitor. You guys are still fine. Um, You can still win the game. You need to just figure out your role, which in this game is pushing bottom and split pushing until you push them to the towers and they just keep landing with that and then roaming that's all you need to do um instead you go top which i think is bad there's a good wave it's nice to have all this farm and everything but this is not where you should be because this is not your role in the game right okay your role is being bottom and pressuring and then tipping to the team or running to the team 
I dubbed it too. Go up, take this wave. If you ever take these kind of waves, it's not necessarily horrible, but you always need to base afterwards and going bottom to where the roll is in the game, right? Um, instead, you're running with the team around while having TP up, and you're pressing the wrong wave. It's not so good. Okay. Guys looking for team fight, you make a catch. Um, it, it, it's good that you make a catch and everything. The only problem with this entire thing is Kayla's bottom. You don't have full vision on them. And you shouldn't necessarily be here. Like imagine Kayla's here instead of you. And you TP in. In that case it would be much better if you're flanking from the bot side. Yeah, that makes sense. Like it's basically just the wrong positions on the map. Even if this fight works out for you or if it doesn't. It's not so important because this exact fight is not going to happen again, right? What's going to happen mm. is mainly the right movements on the map. So you kill Twitch, it's really good for you guys, you might even come back from this entire thing. The way you fought it was really well, you played everything good. Can't really come on that, you get a lot of things out of it. Alright, Dragon spawning soon, it's Martin Drake. It's not that important for you guys to get Martin Drake. Um, the good thing about this fight is you never used to TP. You didn't really use your flash, you have everything up. You just need to remember where you want to be in the map, and then do that. So basically, again, you can go bottom and you can pressure bottom really hard mm -hmm. at all times. I think going for this dragon is bad. Um, if you remember what just happened, basically, you guys just fought them. You won a fight. You killed two towers. Uh, you didn't get the inhibitor, which sucks. But at this point, you guys have a lot of gold, right? Like you have 2.6k. Yeah, 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 that's true. Kale have a lot of gold. Lucian have a lot of gold. Right after getting objectives... Unless you're 100% sure you get the objective that the enemy is fighting for it, you want to base first before fighting again because you have a lot of gold. So you should have finished the base here and then gone for the dragon. You guys might have lost it, that would have sucked, but you don't want to fight a disadvantaged fight, which this basically becomes. And I don't even know if you win it yet, but it's not a fight you want to take. And I think the second you see the opponent's coming, you should either run or try to instantly fight and catch one. Um, you stood on the dragon for too long because you didn't really know what you wanted to do at this point in the game. Okay. Like, you already need to have the thought process. What happens if they're coming? Because you're not really, like, nothing is happening, right? You're just going for the dragon. So the second they come and you tell the thought process, are you going to fight them? Are you going to catch them? Are you going to run away, right? Mm -hmm. At this point, you should have ran away, I think. Um, you guys decide to fight them. You end up almost winning the fight. Your Q was really nice there. Sadly, he pulled really nicely as well. But this is basically just a disadvantage fight for you guys, which you never wanted to take, because they're stronger than you, if they played right. Which ends up happening, they win the fight, right? I see you guys base, or die. Um, coming out of the base, you have... Spirit stats is fine. I think your item build is good. The only problem is... Um, the, like the, problem, yeah. <laughs> the, the item build is good, generally. Mm -hmm. Personally, I would go for more split push heavy build against the Vladimir because you can destroy him really easy. So I would go Executioner's Calling, Blade of the Ruined King, like obviously the Trinity Force, right? But I'd go mm. for those items more so than Titanic. Titanic is a really good item. It's very good in team fights. But I think your role in this game is more so the split pushing side where you split push and then group than it is to uh, team fight, right? Um, to the Titanic, you have less pressure on the Vladimir, which... Mm. Is not as good. Um, this build can work though. I like it though because um, I can push many waves really fast with it, which I normally can't with Arabia because of the. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because she lacks like the. Uh, uh, like, I, I don't think this build is very bad. I just think against Vladimir, the mm. other one is slightly better, but it's not a okay. huge deal. Like, you can still build this against Vladimir, right? Mm. You just need to act in the executioner's calling. So that's that's just the one you need to change, but if you like this build more, you can still go for it. Alright, so at this point, you lost Illusion. Sona's dying. Um, you guys don't want to fight here unless you make a catch on them. So basically, like I think you're going for the Redmi here. I haven't watched it yet. But you should be going for the Syndra or not fighting at all. And you need to one-shot Syndra, if that yeah. makes sense. So like yeah. the... The only reason you want to fight here is if you get a catch. 
catching Sunder, you need to flash stun her and then kill her instantly, or you should just back off here. Um, Vladimir is not somebody you can one shot, that's why you don't want to go for him. Because you're in a disadvantage, right? There are four people, four strong people. You don't know where Twitch is, I assume. Um, going for this guy is just not very good for you guys. And using the E is not good either, because you don't gain anything from the slow, if that makes sense. Yeah. In that yeah. case, it's better for you to save the E and then maybe flash on another target later on. Like, imagine Twitch is here, you can flash on him in the fight if you're actually fighting. Or you can flash on Sundra. You don't need to use E just because you can. Alright, so you guys end up fighting more and more. The fight goes good for you guys. Um, or it seems like it does. Yeah, it goes very good for you guys. So the fight is good, but the thought process behind the fight is bad, right? Like, basically, you guys could have made it even easier. If you guys had went for the right targets. Mm, okay. Yeah. Keep chasing is fine. You guys can get Baron here. That should be your own objective. Um, you have two options. Base, TP, or just go straight to the Baron. You're going straight. It's fine. I think at this point, the only thing you have to be careful about is... Your team can do Baron mostly alone. Um, you want to go on the Twitch because you can one-shot him. You can stun him. You're very strong against the Twitch, right? So you should let Nocturne tank the Baron. He can't really get to Twitch. He doesn't have ultimate, he doesn't have anything. So try and let Nocturne tank. And your goal is to kill the Twitch once he comes. Okay, like, so I should stay at the Baron, but position myself like... Uh, you should uh, position yourself uh, on this side. Yeah, yeah. Or you should be re just going out for the Twitch, basically. Like, you have those two options, right? Mm -hmm. You can even just run out and stand out here, waiting for the Twitch, you know? Okay. And then let them free versus one the Baron. Because they don't need you to kill it. Right now, however, it's don't have ultimate, so it's fine. You instant kill Twitch. Um, so you can help the Baron, but you need to be ready to go out and stand closer towards going out. It's just a small positioning error, but you kill, it's good. You get the kill, it's nice. You still get the Baron, right? Mm -hmm. You guys based. Chaos should have based as well. It's been greedy. Yeah, it's fine. Um, at this point you have Baron, what you want to do is try and see if you can tell your team to go top lane while you go bot lane or opposite, you go top lane, they go bot lane because you want to be far away from each other, right? Them going mid is not so good for you because then the opponents have a close place so they can easily run back and forth between the two lanes. Um, mm -hmm. You're much stronger than Vladimir, you can easily take his towers right now. So I would say you should go bottom, your team should try and go top after cleaning out mid waves and then you should try and take as many towers as possible with the Baron buff. Even if like the inhibitor on mid is uh, open, like it is now? I think your team can push out mid wave and then go towards top. It should be fine. Mm. Um, you can always base at one point. Like if after getting a couple of towers, one guy can base or something. Because right now, you're not really going to get mid inhibitor. That's not going to be possible for you guys, right? So you can still create pressure during that time. And I think you should always be split pushing and then you have TP up or almost always. You're basically rarely using your teleport, if that makes sense. Pressure. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> like right now, for example, you guys have Baron buff and you're just standing mid lane. Not really ending up getting anything. Now you go bottom, which is good. Um, I think the only bad thing here is you're all going bottom. It's much harder for you guys to 5v5 than it is for you guys to 1v1 and 4v4. You guys end up all inning. And this entire... Mm, how's it? The entire thought process behind this fight is bad, right? Because you guys are not getting a catch on them. You guys are not grouped at all. You don't know where they are. And you're trying to chase into them. Into a Syndra, a Gragas, and the Twitch, right? Um, if you all are standing on this side and you chase into a Twitch, he's going to kill all of you guys, basically. Mm -hmm. So it's a position you don't want to do be in. I think the second your kill gets caught, based on ultimate and so on, you should be trying to save her and get out instead of trying to go in. If that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Like you're basically just trying to force a fight where you guys don't have a huge advantage. You can one shot the Twitch, um, almost. You're going on two different targets, which is bad and everything, but I think the fight in itself is already a bad position for you guys. As you can see, you guys also end up losing the fight, right? And that's basically just because you're taking a fight where you're looking at their champions, they're really strong in this position. You already wasted some of your abilities. So it's basically a time where you don't want to fight, even if you're strong on them. 
Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Let's see. Like, if you think about your champion right now, how, how do you want to enter a team fight? Like, what is your optimal way to fight the opponent champions? Just to start really uh, Basically, dive the back line. Or if I have, a, like, if my Lucian would be uh, fed, uh, then I guess peel for him. Like, you, uh, yeah. you grab us off him or whatever. So, I think against these guys, um, they have... A heavy damaging backline. Twitch is really strong. You need to try and kill Twitch. Syndra is really strong as well. You need to try and kill her. Twitch is easier though because he doesn't have a Sunyas and he got a lot of sustained damage. So Twitch is the target you need to go for, right? Peeling for mm -hmm. Lucian is very difficult against the Vladimir. You can't really help yeah, him out not, much. Not in this game. Like, not in yeah, this yeah. Uh, situation because he's like not even ahead or anything. So I guess just uh, dive the backline. Yeah, I think what you should do is either you flash stun somebody instantly and you one-shot them. And um, that's fine to engage with. Flash stun's fine. You should never queue into something to engage, though. In those cases, okay. you should let your teammates engage, right? Unless you can get a flash stun on Twitch or Syndra, you should not be engaging, basically. You should be waiting for other people to engage, and then you follow up, if that makes sense. Mm. In a teamfight scenario. Like, last team fight, you tried to run them down, basically, which is not really going to work for you, in most cases. Now, let's see what we're doing. Dragons come up, Ocean's not that important at this point. Um, like basically you should be bottom here, you have TP and everything. You're grouping instead. Looking for team fights. I think these kind of plays are not so good. Right, I'll show you again. Basically at this point the minion's not that important. It doesn't matter who on your team gets the minions. Um, the only reason you should ever queue in on the minions is if you want to make a catch, right? Okay. So basically queuing in on the minions here, you're basically just taking farm from other people, giving to yourself, but you're putting yourself in a dangerous position, right? Imagine Sunra was here as well. Let's say Sunra was close to Gregas. Mm -hmm. Gregas flash stuns you, knocks you in, you instant die, right? Yeah. So you don't want to go for those minions because you put yourself in a dangerous position. You want your team to be taking them because they're ranged champions. You're starting to actually try to run, but you basically... This entire fight happened because you put yourself in a bad situation. Mm. Luckily, Noctin gets a catch on Syndra, she's really low. And they don't manage to get anything out of it. But I think they could have, right? Gregus is slow on his ultimate, Syndra isn't there. But you couldn't have known both of those things. Mm. Yeah, true. Right. So this thing, at this point, the things you do know is Syndra is low. Um, you guys are almost all full. You want to try and fight here. Um, another thing, then you're playing against the Lulu, you can also flash down the Lulu. Because if you want to Lulu, they don't have their uh, protection anymore. So that's also a target for you. Like basically, Twitch and Lulu are prime targets for you if you can flash down them. Because you can one-shot both of them. You're going top. Um, going top is okay, I think. But you need to tell your team to give up the dragon. Or just uh, delay it. Out of the two. If they're getting gates on here, it's pretty bad for you guys. Even though you have TP, you're slower to run the fight. You guys are TPing. Um, it's okay. Good TP spot. I think this Q is a mistake. Um, how to say it? I'll try to pause the game at that point. Uh, so, again, basically, your goal in the team fights is to stun people or one-shot people, right? You cannot kill the Vladimir, and he can pull your damage. So, you never want to go on him here. You want to be trying to pressure the opponents more by walking up here in a circle around them, right? Mm -hmm. And that way, you also dodge a lot more skill shots. So, you want to try to go around them instead of going in on them. And also, then you're going around them, um, a lot of people will waste the skill shots on you. Because they don't know what path you're taking, right? But the second you go on somebody, you're going a straight line and they know exactly where you're gonna go. Which is also why Syndra easily just stops you here, right? If you had yeah. gone up here, you could have gone on the Syndra instead. Um, here, another problem. You use the E on Gregus again. He's not a target for you. You don't want to stun him at all. You don't need to. You should be saving the E for a better target, or if you can finish somebody off, right? 
Basically, all you're doing is you're slowing his movement speed, doing almost no damage to him by using the E, right? Mm. Better to just keep the E up a lot more times and then use it on somebody else. Because you want you're going on the back line anyways, right? Like imagine here you still had E, you could have slowed the twits instead of the Greg, which was not very important. Alright, you guys are winning the fight, it seems. Again, you slow Vladimir, you don't need to slow him. Just try and hit him and run towards Twitch at all times. If you get close enough to Twitch, you can stun him. Vladimir is fighting you regardless, right? The slow doesn't do anything there. And then you could have stunned Twitch right here because he actually walked into range for you, right? You could have stunned him there. Yeah, right. that makes sense. You won the fight, it's really good. Everything's nice, you get the inhibitor. Keep pushing. You guys seem like you're winning. Yeah, you basically just win the game of this. Alright, let's make a word document. The things you should improve on, right? Um, know when to fight instead of acting. Right, that's one example. You need to. Find use pink wards. Uh, actually, I'll just make it. Mm. Is there anything else you think should change the items? Then just buy more pink wards and use them. Uh, maybe um, look for specific items to counter specific champions. Uh, second champions, like yeah. yeah. So. Alright, so we have the laning phase, we have the items and wards. Um, in mid game, you need to know when to split push and what your job is during the split pushing, right? Like basically, mm -hmm. it feels like you had no idea what you wanted to do on the split push and you had no idea where to be in the map during the mid game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> um, basically, what? most of my games, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think that's a good thing to have as a problem, right? The fact that your problem is mainly macro oriented means it's really easy for you to improve, you know? Where if your mm -hmm. problem was micro intensive, then it'd be much harder for you to improve because you have to actually improve your micro skills where your micro was fine, your team fights was mostly fine except for the ease. The ease could have been better, but um, apart from that, it was fine. You know what to do doing split push? You need to. Know exactly what you want to do in team fights before they happen, and remember to save important abilities for key targets instead of wasting them. I think that's a good way to say it now, because then you mm -hmm. can also use it for other champions instead of it just being a really based. Because basically, in a team fight, you need to know what you want to do before the fight even happens. Um, I would recommend you looking at the scoreboard, seeing what champs you're against, who's fed. Like, let's say Twitch is fed, right? He's a key. T he's even more important at that mm. point. So you want to just kill him fast. If Sinner was fed and Twitch is really weak, you want to go on Sinner, right? Um, so you need to know exactly how you want to approach a team fight and what you want to do, and try and make that happen. And then focus your key stunts and so on on those targets. Yeah. I think that's the main thing you should focus on until next time we do a session. I think there's already enough because you have a lot of things to focus on. You have a lot of things you can improve on. Mm. I think yeah. they're easy for you to improve on. Um, climbing Elo should be very easy for you because your, your micro was good, right? Your mechanics were fine. Mm -hmm. And you never really had a problem of getting out mechanic by the people you played against. It's just a slight bit of lack of knowledge. Oh, yeah, we have one more thing. Minion wave control. Control. Know where you want the minion waves to be and use them properly. I think that's one thing you should improve on, especially in your elo. If you know how to control the minion waves, the game becomes really easy for you. Okay. Um, yeah. One thing you can do if you want to kill the opponents in a 1v1 situation, try and slow push and only hard push than you need to shove it in, right? Because the closer the opponent needs to be to you, the harder it's going to be for them every time, right? 
and the easier it is going to be for you to kill them. A lot of these players in your elo makes the mistakes of trying to overextend or trying to get an extra minion and so on. So they're mm. easy to abuse if you control the minion waves in a way that they don't, they aren't used to. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I'm going to put this in the document. I'll also send it to you, I think. Yeah, yeah. And then basically, if you focus on these things, um, I can maybe make some Stratugas for you to give you some ideas of how to control minions mm -hmm. after the session. Um, yeah. But if you focus on these, I'm pretty sure you will easily climb up an elo. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, good. Then I'm also thinking we do another session in like a week's time, something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can see if you improved, what you improved on, bits of these things you improved on, right? Obviously not going to improve on all of them because it, it's hard to do, right? But you'll improve on some yeah. of them, I hope. Yeah, let's uh, we'll play some games. Yeah, exactly. After this and uh, I'll try to focus on these things. Yeah, and then next week maybe we'll take one of these things off or two of these things off, right? And make mm -hmm. it smaller and smaller and smaller until you have different points to improve on. Mm -hmm. But yeah, okay. I think this session was really good, actually. Yeah, me too. Um, thanks for the session, though. I'm gonna head off and play some of Soul Queue. I assume you're gonna do the same. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, thanks for doing this. Sweet, dude. <laughs> it was fun, man. I enjoyed it. Yeah, okay, yeah. Until next time, then. See ya, brother. Yeah, sure. Alright, so that was pretty good. I wanna... I wanna save this.